Hi, this is Aaron Marshall with Rosho Christie here at UNC Wilmington. So what we're going to do today is look at one of the arguments for God's existence. Now remember, in a classical argument for a classical apologetic argument for Christianity, we started off with does truth exist? And in previous videos, we looked through lots of different um, things in that category. Now we're pivoting to the question, does God exist? And in this question, we're looking at, does a theistic God exist? Now, the difference between theism and or the, basically three different ways that you can think about uh, worldviews, three major worldviews, you're going to have theism and some forms of that, pantheism and atheism. Theism is the idea that God has uh, created the world, but he's not a part of the world. Pantheism is this idea that everything in creation is God, is part of the world. So if you think about God being inside of all creation in some way, and then atheism is the idea that there is no God. Okay, so the question we want to ask is, does God exist and what type of God is there? And there's lots of different arguments that you can give for God's existence. In fact, in our Rosh Christie meetings, we, we walked through about 10 or 15 of them. But what I wanted to do today in this video and then some subsequent videos is first introduce to you one of the um, most well-known and sort of classic arguments for God's existence called the Kalam Cosmological Argument lay out what that argument is, and then in future videos we'll kind of flesh it out a little bit. Okay? So the, the, the Kalam cosmological argument actually was, um, was invented or discovered by uh, a Muslim, Muslim philosophers you know, hundreds of years ago. Uh, and so it's very important to understand in these, in these classical arguments for God's existence, we're not, the, the argument for God's existence doesn't point us directly to Christianity, it points us to God that exists. And then the idea is, once we get, once we recognize that we're in a theistic world, we're in a world in which God does exist, then the question is, which God is it? And that's when we will turn to whether or not Christianity is true. So this argument just gets us to, does God exist? We think the answer is yes. And here's the Kalam cosmological argument, okay? It's, three, it's two premise and a conclusion, okay? Premise one, everything that begins to exist needs a cause. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Premise two, the universe began to exist, therefore, the universe has a cause, okay? Everything that begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, and therefore, the universe has a cause. Now, we are going to say, in a further videos we'll flesh this out, that that cause is God. Now, you can call it whatever you want to, but it seems like it's going to fit many of the classical characteristics of what we call God. Now let me just um, briefly deal with one objection that always comes up that we can help, that, that the Kalam argument helps us to see is not a good objection. Because lots of times people will say to, say to me, well, if everything, that, if everything needs a beginner, then God needs a beginner. In fact, Richard Dawkins' classic argument is, well, then who created God? But notice that the argument doesn't say everything, everything needs a cause. It says everything that begins to exist has a cause. And our argument is that there has to be one uncaused cause that brings everything into existence, we call that God. So God didn't have a cause, because if he did, then that thing that caused him would be God. So God doesn't have a cause. God has always existed. Now, in a couple other videos, we'll deal with some other objections, but it's important to understand that that is the kind of claim that we're making. That's the claim that we're making. And so if you can't challenge our argument by saying, well, who created God? Because that's not, if, if you're talking about a created God, then you're not talking about the God that I'm talking about. So the Kalam cosmological argument, everything that begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. In the next video, we'll look at how we get to the conclusions of the first two premise, and then therefore the conclusion naturally follows from that, that the universe had a cause that we call God. Uh, Rasha Christie at UNC Wilmington, we always want to ask good questions. Does God exist is a great question, but seek good answers. And we think these arguments for God's existence help us to see that the good answers show that not only does God exist, but that Christianity is true. This is Aaron Marshall with Rosho Christie here at UNC Wilmington.